If you're using Notion for your business and you always want to be more productive with it, this video is going to really blow your mind. Notion has just released a new feature that changes a lot of things. This is Notion Automations. Let's say that every time that you convert a lead to a client, you always follow the same set of tasks. Now we can create them automatically from Notion itself. Before we needed third party apps for that. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. In this video, I'm going to show you what this feature really is and what's more interesting, how we can use it for our businesses to save us even more time and to reduce errors. Let's get into it. So what does this feature? Here I have an, an example database that we're going to be using for the first example later, but I can use it to demonstrate the, the feature. So now you will see that we have this little thunder icon and this is where the automations are going to live. Automations are bound to a database. Okay. So they are not workspace wide, they're database wide. So if we click in here, we can start creating a new automation and in an automation, there are two differentiated parts, one, the trigger and the other one, the actions. The trigger is what is going to start all the actions. Okay. And there are different kinds of triggers. If we click here, we can see all the properties in the database. Most of these triggers are whenever a property has been edited. So if I click here on name, so whenever the name of a row is edited, this automation is going to trigger. I can click here, delete. And the only option that we have really to be a little bit more in depth and not just a uh, trigger automations when, a, when, a, when we are editing a property is within the status property. We can select which particular status is going to trigger the automation. And then we have the most interesting trigger, which is whenever a page has been added to a particular view of the database. I don't know if you're starting to understand how powerful this is going to be, because let's say that we create a view to only show the leads that we need to reach out to and that whenever their time comes to be reached out to, they appear in that view of the database. We could trigger an automation based on that. So we can use views and the filters within those views as the trigger for an automation. Okay, we are gonna see this in an example. I know this is a little bit hard to understand, but bear with me. Okay, and now, which kind of actions do we have? We have several. The main ones are we can edit properties within the same database. So we can change statuses to another one. We can delete it. We can change the name. We can link it to a task that already exists, but wait, wait for it. Or what is probably more interesting is we can add pages to other databases or to the same database. We can select to which database and we can edit how that new database entry is going to look like. This is going to be created in this database that I have down here. Okay. And another automation action that we can have is edit pages in. This is a super interesting because we can edit pages that we have recently created through the automation. We will see how this is useful in the future, or we can update pages within a database that match the filter that we want. We will also see how this is useful in the future. Okay. And finally, we can send us a Slack notification so we can send us whatever has triggered the automation in the first place. Okay. So now before we get into the use cases, let me tell you something. This is a new feature. This is very powerful, but this is only going to be available for the plus plan and above. So if you are on the free plan, you will only be able to access database automations through the templates that you download from Notion Standard Gallery but you will not be able to edit them. You will not be able to create new ones. The only thing that you will be able to do is to use the automation to send yourself uh, or your team uh, Slack notifications. That will be the only thing that you can do uh, in the free plan. But I mean, if you ask me, to me, this makes total sense. This is already a super powerful feature. I agree that they have put it behind a paywall. So now to the meaty part, how can we use this? or how am I using this? Because I've had access to this uh, feature for I think over a month. 
I have recreated here the use cases that I that I use it every day, so I can create the automations with you. Okay, so you can also see how I set things up. So the first example, let's say that doing our client flow, once a lead we converts to a client, we always do the same set of tasks as I said in the in the beginning. So how do we do this? So first we will have to set the trigger as status is converted or whatever status you are using for for that matter and then let's create the different tasks okay so let's say that this is all the tasks that i want to always create uh, create a slack channel and welcome client to slack channel of course if you have a fully developed system you can also link these tasks that get created automatically link them to an the sop that explains how to do them so you can outsource these tasks to your team. Okay, so we have created these two tasks, but these two tasks are still not linked to the client itself. So they're just gonna be like floating around. How do we link it to here? So now to link these tasks to the client in this case, we will go here and edit the tasks property of the record. And here we will see the two pages that we have added with the automation. So we can link them and that is it. So what it is gonna do is whenever the started is in progress, we are gonna create these two tasks and link them to the record. Same. So now let's see how this works. Now that we are gonna check the automation. Uh, these automations take three seconds to run. So not very long. So now it's converted. One, two, three. There they are. So we have the two tasks linked to the client. Okay, so this use case number one. So now use case number two. Wouldn't it be great that if we have a project with a set of tasks, that if we decide to cancel the project or to actually complete the project, all the tasks that haven't been completed also change status, so they are not still pending if we haven't really done them. Now we can do this with automations. This one is a little bit more complex. So in this setup, we have this project with a status and we have some tasks linked to it. Within the task database, I'm able to see which is the project status with a rollup and which has been the project updated time with a rollup as well. Of course, to have this one, in the project itself, I would also have to have the updated time, which is here, it's just not visible, but I show it uh, just so you can see it. So how do we do this? I will want that whenever this project is canceled, all the tasks that haven't been done are also canceled. Of course, for this in the task database, I need a canceled status. If not, this doesn't make any sense. But, but also don't just think about this use case. Think of, okay, whenever I change the status of something, what else that may influence that I will also need to change the status to. So how have I set this up? This is the automation. So when the status is set to cancel, this is the same trigger as before. Update the pages in the task database that match these three filters. And here is where the magic is, where the project status is canceled. Okay, so all the tasks that are linked to the canceled project are gonna have that canceled status in that rollup that I showed before. And the project update time is today. This I just put, so every time that a project that has been canceled, I don't want that all the tasks that exist in my database that have a canceled project linked to it are edited with this automation. So that, that's why I created this. And then that the status is not done because I don't want that any of the tasks that have already been done are changed to a canceled status because we will be lying. We actually did them. We have just canceled the project. Okay. And then we just set the status as canceled. One thing to bear in mind, whenever we create this action, we always have here the name property. Let me show you. Edit pages in, whatever, doesn't matter. We always have here the name property or the title property. If you don't want all your names to be deleted, then delete this, this edition. 
because if you run the automation with this untitled over, over here, all the tasks title in this case are going to be wiped out. <laughs> this already happened to me, so don't make the same mistake. Okay, so let's see how this works. We open the Predator's page. We have all these three tasks that have not been started, this task that, ha that is in progress, and this task that is done. So let's change the status to cancelled. And we can see how all the tasks have been cancelled and this one that was done stays done. Let's go for another use case. If you have a more or less complicated client workflow that it starts from here, but then the, the client can do one action and it will go to one part of the workflow or, the, or, or they can purchase a different product or they, they can do different things. So not all of them follow the same, uh, the same flow. But in Notion, we don't we cannot really see the flows here and, and once they're in one status we cannot really know what the client has done in the past we'll just have to remember it and that's not ideal so we can fix this with automations as well let's say that we have client daniel and we are selling two different products i mean one product and one service and then we are fulfilling the product or the service so the process starts here and then it goes to two different options product or service and then it goes to fulfilling and continues so this is how how it works so i would like to know if daniel purchased a service or purchased a product so how do we do this with automations new automation the trigger is the same with the status and let's build the product one okay so this is the trigger and then once we have built the trigger we need to build the action but here there is a tricky part we cannot just edit the property and add the bot product because this is going to replace everything that is within the tags. So if the client goes through a different set of stages and we want to save them all, then this is not going to work because we're just going to have one at a time. So we need a different approach. And this is done with the edit pages in. Now we need to find the same database and we need to come up with a filter that is going to affect that client that has just changed the status. So this can be so status is waiting for product payment and remember to delete the name and what we want to edit is the tags and here we have the possibility to add a tag and bought product save so let's say that this was already a lead and we change this status to product payment so we want to tag that this client has bought a product so let's see what happens and the new tag has been added. Oh, before I forget, yesterday I was checking my YouTube analytics and I have noticed that only 15% of you subscribe to the channel when you watch these videos. If you want to help more business owners find the freedom that can be achieved through systemizing the businesses and automating as we are seeing, please consider subscribing so this can reach more people. Okay, back to the video. Now let's get into the even more interesting stuff because we haven't seen the kind of trigger that I like the most. So for this fourth use case, what I want to do is to be able to track how long a task has taken me to complete. And for this, in my task database, this is my real task database, I have created two date properties, one to log when I start the task and another one for when I finish the task. And I can use automations to log when I start and when I finish the task. But here there is one thing. Let's imagine that I start working on this task over here, but then I decide to pause it. And then I put it in progress again. And then I pause it. I will just want that the time that I have logged when I have started the task is just written one time and that is it. And it's not overwritten every time that I send it to the purpose. So how do I do this? For this, in my databases page, I have created a database views for automations. And in here I have created views that are going to be triggers for different automations. So remember when I said that we have the automation that whenever the page is added to a view, the automation triggers. So this is where I'm storing all these views that are serving me to trigger automations. So in this case, we have this started for the first time and the trigger is page added. So how am I filtering this? So whenever a task is in progress for the first time, the started working at that property is going to be empty so it's going to enter here and the automation will run and the idea is that the automation will set the time in which the automation was run in that day property but if i move it back to not started and back to in progress then 
this will not comply with the filter and it will not come here and it will not trigger the automation for the second time. So let's see how I fully set this up. You've already seen how I've set up the, the view. And now the only thing is set the starting working at property to now, to the date and time when the automation was triggered. And that is it. Let's see how it works. So we have this task over here. So let's drop it in here, open it and see what happens. Okay, start the working at uh, this time. Cool. So now if we finish it, I have an, the same automation for when we finish it and completion date is this one. So now if we build a formula that compares these two dates and times, we can figure out that I spent one minute in doing this task. Now, another example. Let's say that for our leads, we like to mark in a date property when we want to follow up with them next to try to convert them into a client. So I would want that whenever that date comes, a task is created reminding me to say, hey, you need to follow up with this person. So we can do this again with the views. I can have a view over here when the next follow-up property is today. This is a manual property that I, that I set up. And what the automation is going to do is to create me a new task, assign it to me and link it to the client telling me, hey, you need to follow up with this person. I mean, I don't show it. The setup is exactly the same as what we have already seen. It's just a different use case, but the technical setup is exactly the same. But now think of all the things that you can do following this principle. Whenever something enters in one view, I want to create something else elsewhere. So I'm going to leave this one as an exercise for you to try and replicate this example. Because yes, practicing is what really makes us pros at Notion. So if you're wondering, oh my God, now I'm gonna have to watch a lot of videos to get ideas of things to automate, blah, 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 blah. Maybe you don't. How do I come up with things to automate? I just see every action that I do daily, manually. And then I think, okay, can I automate this? And I get into the automations tab and see what I have. Let's see if I can tinker something and I can come up with something that is going to allow me to automate that. So just watch yourself, see how you operate, and let's see what you can also automate. So now, if you have liked this video, now consider subscribing and hitting the like button because this is going to allow even more business owners understand that all of this exists and that they can actually systemize and automate their businesses to be finally free. So this is all I have for you. There is going to be a video over here or here that I think you may like. So make sure to watch it. And that is it from my side. And as always, hasta la próxima.